So you're in the pit, ready to start. First thing, close the canopy. It can be kind of loud. So once you close your canopy, make sure not to close it while your JFS is on because it'll shut off your JFS. So once your canopy is closed, go ahead and press the spider. It'll close here and you'll be good to go. Do not click here. That's the alternate gear. Don't click that. Engine feed is in the norm. Make sure that's in the norm here. You left click to do that. Don't worry about the tank and everything. It's not implemented yet. Then you move on over here to something that people miss. Go to the air source. Go to norm. Make sure it's in norm. If it's not in norm, you'll burn up your avionics and you won't be able to fly. Next, after that, go to your main power switch. Make sure that you're in main power before you start your engine or before you start your, your jet fuel starter. So make sure you're in main power and then you'll start your jet fuel starter using the left click. So as the engine is starting, you need to pay attention to it because BMS has simulated and implemented some abnormal starts of the engine. So you need to pay attention to your FTIT, fuel turbine inlet temperature gauge, your RPM percent, your hide oil pressure, light, and your engine light. Also your oil pressure right here. That's this gauge right here. If your FTIT goes above 750, that is a hot start. That is an abnormal start. You need to shut down before your engine catches on fire. You need to make sure that your engine warning light goes off at 60%. So once this, this needle goes past 60%, the engine light should extinguish. High oil pressure light should extinguish between 15 and 70 RPM. Usually it's about 60 or 55 it starts to, it, it, it extinguishes, if not earlier. If that does not extinguish and your RPM percent is still going up, if it's going up, you need to restart and try try again on your on your start there on your engine. So I'm going to play it and we're going to make sure the hydro goes out and the engine goes out. So the RPM there's 35. There's 40. Engine goes out. The the hide oil engine in light goes out at 40. There's 50. F tit still below 750. Engine should go out here. Heard the JFS cut off. There's 60. Engine light goes out. Everything else is basically the same. Turn on all of your systems, but it's a it's a left click, so make sure you turn on everything, but it's a left click. Do not hit the switch, it's for the HUD standby mode. Turn on the MMC, all of this. MIDS is not implemented. You can only do norm for now for the align alignment. And now your screens are on. So first thing you want to do is go into test. See these these fault codes here? Go down here, click as reset, go back up, press clear, go to your DTE, press load. You want to load load that, your DTC, you want all your stuff in there, so you press load. And while you're loading that, you can run your flickus your flickus bit. So you must run your flickus bit or else you may have may or may not have problems in the air with your your flight controls. So at a ramp start, flight control i bit is mandatory because you might have failures in the air. Once all that is loaded, you can go to your UFC, get out of backup and make sure that your radios are on from man to both. Got to turn on your your radios here. They're defaulted off, so make sure the volume is up. And if your radios did not load, it's probably because your radio was off. So make sure that your presets are the same. If you if you're not sure, you could always load it again. Go back to DTE and you could load just the preset, the, just the presets for the com now. So you can just load com. And it'll load the presets in your your DED and all of your presets for, for radios. Once your iBit has completed Tiger three one contact tower for takeoff. Switch to once your iBit has completed, it will go to off, automatically go to off. If it fails, there'll be a fail here and you'll know that it failed. If it passes, it won't say anything. So you're you're good to go. Where it does say that it passed is right here. So if you go to your Flickus page on your main menu here, you'll see I bit pass or bit passed. So your alignment, all we have is norm right now. So make sure you choose norm. And before you choose nav, make sure that your alignment is blinking on your HUD. 
and it'll it'll you'll know that it, it aligned. Also, if you do not put your EGI into nav, you will not have any steer point lines. So you need to make sure that you put your EGI to nav, and you wait for your align to uh, to complete before you even taxi or move, because it'll take longer at that point. So once your alignment goes to point eight, it blinks ready on the DED, and it blinks align on your HUD. You are now ready to move your EGI to nav and your alignment has completed. Once you move it to nav, all of your steer point steer lines will populate on your on your MFD as long as you've done your DTC load. So make sure you do that before you taxi.